Grand Rising to the Collective. Man, y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop an upload. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week. And this is for entertainment purposes as well. And when you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, it helps the collective grow, helps the collective get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content tap in with this content. But I also want to say, before we get into this video, man, I was searching for I was searching, right? I came across two clips that I know wasn't gonna be suitable for YouTube's guidelines. But I couldn't post them even if it was. It was, it, it hit, it hurt my stomach, man. The first video was uh, Ryan Garcia talking about what he saw at Bohemian Grove. And I actually heard the, the footage. You couldn't see it, but you could hear it. Of a kid getting violated, man. Yeah, it hit my stomach. Like, that one, that one hurt me. There's a second one of Diddy, supposedly, doing, violating Meek Mill. That one hit me. I can't, I, I couldn't, my stomach couldn't handle it, man. But if y'all wanna go check them out, go check them out on TikTok, bro. Go diving down that rabbit hole, if you please. I went and hit my stomach, I couldn't handle it. I just want to let y'all know, like, because I know there's some, some people, like, some of y'all might really want to go diving down that one. Do it at your own expense. But I just want to let y'all know those was two clips I couldn't get on this channel. I typically go against the grain, but with them ones, I wasn't about to push it. I couldn't. I'm going to let y'all know so y'all can go looking, but I ain't going to go ahead and put that one on this channel. But, yeah. For the, so, so, yeah. Let's get right into the video, man. Let's go. With our African friends, we think that Israel now is the best partner that the countries of uh, Africa could have, and it's something that is dear to our hearts. The founder of uh, the founder of uh, modern Zionism, the national movement of the Jewish people, was Theodor Herzl, and he said, "After I liberate the Jewish people, I will go to Africa to help liberate the black people." We have uh, our African brethren, the Ethiopian Jews, who are in our society, and I personally work every few weeks to inter help integrate more and more and incorporate them in our society. Definitely a lot to unpackage in that video, right? Let's just start with their African brethren, the Ethiopian Jews. A lot of the women were given contraceptive without consent because they did not want to have no little black babies running around their little apartheid state. So he gonna liberate the people in Africa. Liberate them from what? From those diamond mines that's drenched in blood that one of the apartheid corporations make so much profits in? Facts over feelings. 1997 marked a pivotal moment when a couple of apartheid state diamond businesses began penetrating the Congolese market. It's not a coinky dink either that this happened at the same time of rapid destabilization in the country. How can some folks that took advantage of destabilization and in some instances brought it on try to be the same entity to quote unquote liberate some folks? Make it make sense. And then you said, what about Theodore Herschel? Man, he was one of the folks that almost had Uganda looking like the strip. Stop playing. Education is elevation. Education is elevation. Say that shit twice. When they shut the bomb off at Trinity and the desert, that's when the first Tic Tac showed up. That was a crash. Uh, it was 12 miles away from Trinity. This Tic Tac, the way it was described by people who discovered it first, which were kids. Its manufacture was extremely advanced, and the kids who stole stuff out of the walls of this after it crashed, it was like uh, hair-like stuff came out of the walls, and it tingled when you held it in your hands. If you took it out at night, it would glow in the dark. Glowed in the dark for like 25 years. Because some of these kids that stole parts of this stuff were putting it on their Christmas trees. That's not human manufacture, that's manufactured by somebody else. It may be that the people who manufacture the Tic Tacs live in certain areas on our planet that are unknown to us because that's what they've done for thousands of years. It's our rival that changed everything. Anyone 
Tyson, Jordan, Jackson, Action, Action. Michael, take your pick. Jackson, Tyson, Jordan, Game Six. Your name on the top was short like Leprechaun. Your name on the top was short like Leprechauns. My brain on the top is long like marathons. When the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling when I fuck him, will I diss him? When the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling when I fuck him, will I diss him? Cause I see some ladies tonight that should be having my baby. Baby, I see some tonight. This shit be rolling with Jason. Jason, gon' blast tweets first. Ask questions last. That's how most of these so-called gangsters pass. Tweets first, ask questions last. That's how most of these so-called gangsters pass. Isn't this great? Your flight leaves at eight. My flight lands at nine. My game just rewind. Isn't this great? My flight leaves at eight. My flight lands at nine. My game just rewinds. On the road to riches and diamond rings. Real niggas do real things. On the road to riches and diamond rings. To some people, they would say he was cycling lines to pay homage to Biggie. But then to some people, they going to say, nah, he biting. And then you got the people in the middle that's going to be like, bro, I get it. He over here paying homage, but he not saying he not uh he not using the line and then turning around and dropping biggie name in there to give credit to biggie name and i guess if we gonna get on drake's ass we gotta get on jay's ass too in this sense I'm not gonna take all his art away some of his art he be saying certain shit that he be saying certain things that resonate and then sometimes he say certain things and be like, bro, you with the people over there. And then sometimes he doing things like this where he kind of taking. I mean, I, I've been seeing that. I just thought I'd slide that in there because we be on Drake's ass. So why we can't get on Jay's ass? And I'm just saying, in this sense, I get on his ass. Anybody mess up, you got to get on their ass. Simple as that. That's what we got to do, the collective. If we see it, even if we like him, even if we was a fan at one point, hey, wrong is wrong and right is right. And we got to hold things accountable now. Like, that's what we got to start doing as a collective. Hold it accountable, man. Hold each other accountable. If we see one another stepping out of line, like, let's just let each other know in a respectful way. But right now, in this sense, Jay was biting. <laughs> he was biting. He doing the same thing Drake does, bro. Yep. <clears throat> There has been multiple sightings of four suns that's in the sky. Not one, not two, but four suns in the sky. Now I know we've been feeling the energy change. This is another sighting somewhere else on the other side of the world that also caught four suns in one, two, three, four. This is some real life Dragon Ball Z stuff. This is definitely something strange. Oh yeah. Also in China, somebody also reportedly seen another sighting of four suns in the sky. It's starting to make sense on why the frequency and the energy of the planet is shifting. Four suns? Yeah, y'all remember when I was talking about Planet X, Wormwood, the Blue Katina, yeah, all of that good stuff? It seems like the sun is recruiting people into the Fireball Squad. This definitely feeling like we're in the episode of Star Wars. But you know what they say, the truth is stranger than fiction. But y'all let me know what y'all think about us allegedly having four suns in the sky in the comments. Like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. Follow me on YouTube if y'all want that exclusive content. Hit that Gmail, y'all trying to do business. I'm all for it, especially if it's going to be positive.
Man, again, that's why I don't watch the news. Because when you see the news, when they show Iraq, what they say? What do they show? When they show, when they show Africa on the news, what they show? But what does it really look like, though? Got some, we got, we got some proof right there. Iraq looks kind of dope. Not kind of dope. I'm, I'm actually being insulting right now. Iraq looks dope. Period, boy, point. Period. Straight to it, bro. It, Iraq looked dope. Spam it up if you from Iraq, if you lived out there, if you've been out there, and if you agree. But that's why I don't watch the news. The news don't be giving the truth, man. It gives you what you what they want you to see. And what they want you to, how they trying to control your perception. That's why they're giving you certain things to see. And that's why they ain't giving all the truth, because they're controlling the perception by the, some people who watch the news. But you got to be able to see through that. That looks dope, bro. That looks dope. And that, it just it just sucks that we actually got still people who would still go run to the news, believe everything they say, and never notice that it looks that beautiful out there. It's crazy. Man, we live in a, the world is, the environment-wise, man, it's very interesting. It's a beautiful world. Some of the people in it sometimes ain't that, ain't that beautiful, ain't that good. So that's, that's the, but you got to have your bad and your good, I guess. I guess. Up. Well, they found this cave that was under it, but something really creepy happened when somebody decided to film it. Now, I don't know if this was debunked, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, and I want you guys to tell me what you think. But you can hear, like, demonic sounds and chains. And people are connecting that video with this passage in Revelation. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One sang to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. <laughs> Leave it alone and not go anywhere near it, please. Why should a loser, a fake, and a fraud end up marrying and having a child with one of the most rich and prominent families in the world? Has the very first public appearance of the infamous James Caspel, aka Michael Prince, on most normal levels, James uh, comes over as a fake and a fraud. People say he's lying. I am suggesting that we need to look at this very carefully indeed. There are too many questions every time he speaks. During this lecture, certain people contacted me and confirmed that he did assassinate a dealer in Hyde Park. Another person knew and met James when he was eight years old and confirms James's story about drugs and drug dealing and drug taking. Father, who went to jail and died shortly afterwards. James also says he volunteers. He opted for the dark side. What I am concentrating on is who is running Casbolt? What's behind all this? Why should a loser, a fake and a fraud end up marrying and having a child with one of the most rich and prominent Jewish families in the world? Why would they bother allowing their precious daughter to even associate with such a loser, a fake and a fraud? There are too many questions here. And for this reason, the Basis Project presents raw data for others to analyze and check and do their own research for. Besides I leaning towards, fake or fraud, or is he really a super soldier? That's a strong point. That's a strong point how he said, and he said every time he speaks, there's a lot of questions. A couple of times we didn't have him on here and he didn't say some things and I didn't have that. I've been like, hey, what y'all feel like? Like, how y'all feel about what he's saying? Because he has said a lot of things that make you question. But that's a valid point. If he's a fake and a fraud, why would that family allow him to be with their precious daughter? With their precious daughter? I mean, hey. And whatever the hell was up in that damn cave, 
bro, leave it there. To me, you ain't gotta be a rocket scientist to hear that sound and be like, bro, so whatever down there don't need to be there. Get your ass on. <laughs> Go on, bro, get up out of there. I'm just going over the story about when they closed down Lorton, they said they was not going to send people more than 400 miles out. I know it's 500, okay, so then I know Rivers wasn't like, people could try, Rivers not so bad, but all these other places are completely, completely crazy. People in Texas here and there. Yeah. So you were saying that you had, what, the seven years? Okay. So where did you do your time at? They call me Bird or Ryan. On September the 10th, 2016, I shot a man in Washington, D.C. on Connecticut Avenue. I'm from Washington, D.C., which I still know Kentucky was in that 500 mile radius because it's outside of it's outside of West, uh, West Virginia. So that's in the 500 mile. Okay, could you um like start over again? So you were sentenced in a state, you you were sentenced in the um not the, in the District of Columbia court. and not in federal court. Right. So it's not federal, not but you federal. had to go to another state because they closed Lorton. I had to go to another state because yes, they closed Lorton in DC. And Lorton was in even Virginia. It was in, in anyway. So your first bid was where? That was my longest bid. My first bid was in Gilmer FCI, right? The second one. All of this was in the seven years, okay? I went to five different spots in the Federal Bureau. I've been to five different prisons in seven years in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. My first prison was Gilmer FCI, that's a medium. My second prison was Yazoo, Mississippi, that's a medium, all the way in Yazoo, Mississippi, from Washington, D.C. My third prison was the penitentiary, and that was in Kentucky, which is within that 500 mile radius. Then my fourth prison was United States Penitentiary, Beaumont, Texas. I'm from Washington, D.C. Then my fifth prison that I just came home from on December the 6th, 2023, I ain't been at home a month yet, it'll be two months exactly, February 6th, 2024, was United States Penitentiary Coleman 1. That was all in Florida. I'm from Washington, D.C. So why would you being moved around so much? <laughs> because I was what you're doing, you know, when you're in a, when you're in prison, like I said, you have all that time, and all you can do is do what they want you to do, which is nothing. They just want you to sit on your ass all day and watch TV and become complacent. See, Allah didn't put a complacent bone in my body and I have ADHD. So I have a short attention and I'm hyper, so I can't sit still. So guess what? I was doing whatever the fuck I felt like. It was fun. Sometimes a person tried me, I had to be his ass. Sometimes a person tried me, I had to stab him. Sometimes the police tried me, and guess what? I couldn't beat their ass, but guess what? I tried, and they beat my ass. So when you was in those different institutions, how many people from D.C. was there with you? All right, at my first institution in West Virginia, at the FCI, the medium, we was 300 deep, all right? Because we was closest to home. We was on that 500-mile radius, right? When I went to Yazoo, we was only six people from Washington, D.C. Six people from Washington, D.C. Feel me? We didn't even have our own table, we had to share a table, right? Then when I went to the penitentiary in Big Sandy, that's in Kentucky, so that's within a 500 mile radius because it's outside of West Virginia, we were like 500 to 300 deep, you feel me? But when I went to Beaumont, Texas, we were a good number even though we was further down there, we were probably like maybe a good 100, 200, probably no more than that, you feel me? When I got the Coleman One, a lot of us are down there too. So, we so where's the Coleman One at? In Florida, Coleman, Florida, outside of Tampa Bay. You feel me? You go to an airstrip in Tampa Bay, you pass the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium, riding on a bus in shackles like you're in slavery. Mm -hmm. So they transport us, right? And the way they transport us is buses and airplanes while we're in shackles. So I had a shackle on my arms. You feel me? Like this, a shackle around my waist. You feel me? Shackles on my ankles. And guess what? I'm maximum security, so guess what else I had to have? I had to have a black box, right? And the shackles is tight as shit. You could barely walk. And so what was the longest air trip that you had? Woo! All of them were long. Because you stop at all different types of airstrips and pick it up different people. They're all long. They're all long. So you're sitting there for hours, hours in shackles. You're sitting in those shackles for so long, by the time you get to their transit center, which is in Oklahoma City, right next to Oklahoma City Airport, in this transit center, the plane pulls up like a regular plane, but guess what? Your feet never touch the ground because it has the same airport boarding and exit thing. You don't never touch the ground. You go straight in the building. Don't nobody ever see you because your plane 
it's the unmarked plane. It just has a symbol that the skies know, hey, that's human trafficking right there. Okay, so when they sent you beyond, you everyone was aware of the, the yes. travel restrictions. Did you ever complain to any of the government officials or to anybody in the corrections well, facilities? I did not complain because I was doing time and I understood that, hey, it is what the is. I, I, this is not my home. I mean, did any of your family members were able to ever no. come visit you in those other states? They never visit. I never got one visit in my entire time in the federal bureau of prisons Not, and i did seven years i never got one visit and did you have any children before you got incarcerated my son was five months years old he's about to be eight so was you able to communicate to your son in any way I while you incarcerated i was called I, I i did all the legwork because you had to listen to me very carefully and this is my trigger warning because the video i'm about to show you is in an interview of Sophia Soto's mother pleading for her baby girl to come home, not armed with the knowledge or the information that she has already lost her life. And the very man that has been arrested, her boyfriend is sitting right behind her while she's pleading and begging for her baby to come home. I went to pick her up after school. Um, and she wasn't there. Um, so I started driving around, try, maybe thinking she took a walk. Maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well. <sighs> drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school, the school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. It was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school. But she never made it from that walk from, and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up. Uh, she never made it to school after that. She did accidentally leave her phone on Monday. Um, which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. Um, so she left her phone at home, so there's no way to trace her. They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off, so it's not pinging to anything. She hasn't been active on social media, none of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of them had seen her Monday or heard from her. Um, yeah, there's no update. Sunday, she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She, she was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, she was, she's just a happy girl and she showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy, so, you know, she had the best day. I know my entire family's out looking. They've all uh, spread bunch of flyers they've gone i've had people contact me that they've gone to the international airport to spread flyers to amtrak to greyhound just any way that if someone's taken her and they're trying to take her just to show her face just to make sure you know she's not being taken against her will as a mom you know what is your what's your mother's intuition telling you right now trying to hope for the best but I'm just I'm scared for her I want her to be okay I want her to be safe I don't want to, I don't want her to come back home I, I just I just want her back whatever that means just I just want her back what kind of monster do you have to be that you are capable of sitting in front of your girlfriend knowing that you have removed the love of her life off of this earth. This forum has found you guilty. Midnight has found you guilty. I send you to general population and God willing, we will sentence you to death. And that is all. I have to say about that, Midnight, I am out. <sighs> Man, that type of shit would never make sense to me. And you know that mom probably blaming herself in some form that she feels like she should have never let this man that close. 
It didn't say husband, it said boyfriend. And I, it's complicated, but people make mistakes and she shouldn't beat herself up about that. Maybe he hit it real well. It just, it just don't make sense, bro. It just don't make sense. It's like, come on, bro, like, that's her child. You know how, like, like I said, women and babies and kids, bro, they got kids and babies, they pretty much all the same, but they off limits, bro. They off limits, but send him to GP. Send him to GP, bro. Don't, don't, send him to General Pop, bro. Don't, don't let him go to PC. Don't let him go to PC. Don't let him go to PC, man. He need to go to general population. And also, it's just like, it raised a red flag for me when she's crying. The least he could have did was get up and show her some type of support. Be there for her. I don't care if your face ain't being seen. And I mean, me personally, I don't care if the news said you can't get on the camera. You gotta stay in the back. If I see my girlfriend, wife, or anything crying, sister, mom, anything, friend, a random stranger, I'm gonna try to go over there and just caress them because you know they're going through a tough time. And if you ever lost somebody close, if you ever been through something real, you gonna know how that feeling feel. You don't wanna feel alone. And just for other people to be there, it, it, it helps a lot. And he didn't even get up and budge. I thought it looked like he was smoking a cigarette. Shit, he's, he's ass probably nervous, but yeah, send that man to general population. Spam it up if you agree. Hey, we need to talk. This isn't working anymore. And it's not us. It's you. We just want different things. Our idea of a good time is relaxing on the beach. Hitting up the spa. Or checking out a new restaurant. You just want to get drunk in public and ignore laws. Do you even remember what happened last March? Was our breaking point, so we're breaking up with you. And don't try to apologize and come crawling back. When an entire city makes a goddamn commercial begging all y'all across the country to not bring your ass <laughs> to their city for spring break, I think it's safe to say y'all ain't worth a damn. All the money that they make during that spring break time is not worth having you motherfuckers in they city. God damn. <laughs> what I'm about to say, only take if it resonates, you feel me? But, um, you know, it got to do with, like, black magic, witchcraft, coats. I feel like you single-handedly destroying a coat. Like, Somehow, some way, somebody you know, like, put you on the, the radar of this coat. And, um, you know, they truly didn't know who they was dealing with when it came to you. Like, when I say from the top to the bottom, from the leader to the smallest worker, whoever you are, like, you running through this coat single-handedly by yourself. You might not even know this. You might not even know who the damn cult members are, but you doing it. And I also feel like they feel like you the boogeyman or something. Like they truly scared of you. Like if if any of these people was to see you out in person, they might truly jump out their skin, you feel me? Like that's how terrified of you they are. And for good reason though. Like, man, you my hero, whoever you are, cause I'm sick of all this coat shit. Man, they think they can do whatever they want and, and target whoever they want to. But all that negative stuff. And you somebody that, 121 as I say this, you ain't going for it. It's like, it's part of your mission, your purpose or something to just, only you can do this, whatever it is. And only take what resonates. If this ain't resonating with you, it's not for you. You gonna know this for you when, if you, when you hear it. But like, it's almost like you a vigilante or something. Like you you choosing to fight back. And you got the green light to do this, you feel me? Like, I'm even getting a message from my hat, like the camouflage. Like, you hard body, bro. Like you, you, you like a general. You somebody that's spiritually, like your ranking in the spiritual realm, bro. Like, 
You got a whole lot of stars and medals, you feel me? And shit, whoever you are, you real magical. And I truly meant it when I said it. Hey, you my hero. Keep going. Don't stop. Blood, I'm proud of you. And you know, I'm always rooting for you. Keep going, you feel me? This eclipse coming on April 8th, 2024 is suspicious as shit, and I got several reasons why. Let's get into it. Number one, it's going to pass over the New Madrid fault line. This area is over 125 years due for a massive earthquake. Back in the 1800s, an eclipse passed over this exact same area. A few days later, we had a massive earthquake with several aftershocks. My second reason why I find it suspicious as shit, look at all of the planets that are going to come into conjunction either right before the eclipse or right after the eclipse. It's giving Hercules Titans moment. Look, because not only do we have all of these planets line up in conjunction and we have an eclipse coming, we have the Devil's Comet that's going to be visible during the 2024 eclipse. Now, it's going to be brightest in June of 2024, but it will be visible with the naked eye during the eclipse. All of this put together is suspicious as shit. Now, once again, it's giving Hercules when all the planets line up and the Titans come out of the Earth and Hades has to direct them to Mount Olympus. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling lately. How y'all feel about the eclipse coming? I just, they, I just don't like Devil's Coming. <sighs> Year to eight. It coming on, it's coming on April 8th. My birthday on the 9th. I don't like it, bro. <laughs> Then we got what Mars going to Saturn on April 10th. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't really too pleased that it's all like close to my birthday. But it's like okay, whatever. Nothing happens by coincidence. So, I mean, there's some reason, reasoning behind it. I'll figure it out over time. But I don't like that. But y'all, let me know how y'all feel about what she just said. Also, in the clip before that, for me, I don't feel like I be running through a cold or nothing. I feel like I be running through just people who are evil, in my opinion. When I was doing bad, life was good, but it came with a lot of baggage though. It came with a lot of a lot of baggage. And then when I wanted to start doing good, life started going. Life started testing me. It started really testing me. Trying to get me to go back to bad. And right when I just came to the conclusion, around last year, when I was like, bro, we really gonna cut all the bad out. We're gonna cut all the bad, everything start going great. And we've been great since. We got times we, you know, you're gonna have your ups and downs emotionally throughout the day. But as far as where I used to be, I'm not really there no more, but I can say the more I'm growing, I do come across evil on different levels. And it's, it tests me differently now. So for me, it's not like uh, cults or nothing I feel like I'm running through. I just feel like it's I'm on a good path and I got to go against the evil. That's how I feel about mine. You let me know how y'all feel. But personally, I feel like that's always going to be the battle. And anything you ever, any movie, any story we was ever told, even with, you know, anything you ever want to think about, it's always a good person versus a bad person. Any movie, book, story, myth, whatever you want to call it, it's always like that, though. So... I feel like what's the difference? It's not gonna be no different in my life. If I'ma go be good, I'ma come across the bad too. But it's not what you go through, how you go through it. That's how I say. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Cause you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat, keep going, count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? Six, seven, and nine, 40, 41, 42. Keep up, keep going. <laughs> One, two, keep going. Three, keep four, going. Three. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Look how she looked after her best friend mixed human bones and corpse ashes into her food. Her name is Narielli Kacharuko. I will tell an impactful story experienced by the young woman during her adolescence in Venezuela. At age 15, she became the victim of cruelty from someone she considered a friend, 19-year-old Stephanie Caroline. It all started when Narielli discovered that the boy Stephanie was dating had been involved with her. Like and share to unlock the second part. Jealousy and fury consumed Stephanie, leading her to seek revenge in an absurd way. Turning to a local sorcerer, she performed a ritual designed to make Narielli pay for her supposed slight. The friendship between them continued 
and little by little Nariely got closer to Stephanie without suspecting the dark intentions she harbored. In a treacherous moment, Stephanie offered Nariely a plate of food, which confident in their friendship, she accepted. Shortly afterwards, Nariely began to display violent behavior, screaming and showing signs of delirium. Stephanie simply disappeared, leaving Nariely at the mercy of inexplicable suffering. Nariely's desperate mother took her to two hospitals, where numerous tests did not reveal any abnormalities in her body. Devoid of hope, Nariely's parents saw her wasting away, losing her speech and movement, confined to a bed and staring into space. Even seeking help in evangelical churches, nothing had any effect. Do you want to know the end of the story? So leave part two in the comments. Whatever that box. I'm gonna go check part two. That's that's that's. Damn. When I was raised, man, look. My mom and my uncle both told me, don't, don't um. Don't leave your drinks. Keep your drink with you. Most of the time, watch that person if they making your drink. Most of the time, don't even let them make it. You do your own drink. Just don't leave it sitting. Food. We really don't really eat out like that. I mean, not, I mean, we go out and eat, but as far as like letting somebody make my plate, I be really watching, and I really, and that's rare also. And I was raised not to let that happen also. Oh, and my grandmother used to always be like, don't let them make your food because they might put some hair in it. Y'all know what I mean. That can be multiple different ways. And my uncle used to always tell me like, if you ever start smoking, man, don't let nobody roll up your stuff, bro. They're going to put some in it. Check out what happened to DMX. And... My mom used to always tell me that, like, don't let nobody, just don't smoke with anybody. Because they could be putting all types of stuff in your, in there. And you don't even know what it is, and now you even got messed up. And it's a Hooper. Um, what's his name? Damn, I forgot his name. He played for Bethune Cookman right now. And he, that happened to him, that's the story I heard. That he was smoking with some friends and didn't know that they laced it with something. And messed him up. He had, uh, became schizo. It made him schizo. And then he had to go through a whole recovery just to get back to play ball right now. Could have messed his life up. Worse than he bounced back, thank God. I can't remember his name right now, but he played for Bethune Cookman. And that's how I see, like, and on that topic right there. On that topic. And that friend ain't a friend. She needs, she she already on the path. She'll catch her, she, she'll get the karma, bro. Karma will be back on her ass. But how they, how, how somebody know that she did that, though? Who got who had all them details and why she's still walking? Cause your people should be getting back. Should be she be on it, man. We her people should be getting that get back right now. And the Meek Mill, I got a call from Dev Jam. Ain't go nowhere near to where I would have to do some shit like that. But I ain't built like that, bro. I'm not bunny hopping. <laughs> I'm not bunny hopping. I'm not doing none of that. I'm straight. We'll build it independently. But it just bothered me now when I see me because he is one of my favorite artists. One of my favorite artists. And then I come across the what I told y'all I heard with him and Diddy and it just hits my gut every time I think about it. Damn, bro. Damn. It's crazy. Mr. Scene scared the shit out of him. If you want to know if someone is really telling the truth when they're telling the story, look in their eyes. I watched that man interview. I looked in his eyes and I seen a man that was afraid for his life. Once you understand how these rituals actually work, when they bring you in these so-called open door and closed doors, secret doors, they start showing you shit your mind cannot handle. That's why they say this spirituality, open your third eye. Because if you don't open your third eye, you're going to start seeing these demons. You're going to start seeing witchcraft. You're going to start seeing all kind of aliens. This shit is not fake. I know a lot of people say it's fake, but once you go in Hollywood or behind these behind these curtains, you start to see certain things in these rituals. We've been hearing about this for a long time. So-called whistleblowers that blow the whistle that try to tell people, yo, 
These people are doing rituals. These celebrities are clones. They're not real people. They're demons. We hear about this all the time, but we don't pay it no mind. But when someone come out and tell a people and have actual footage of what's really going on, people don't know how to handle it. But whatever this man seen, it scared the shit out of him. All you gotta do is look in his eyes. But not only that, the people that control Hollywood is actually scared right now too. Because if you see people making videos speaking about this topic, they are taking the videos down. So this man is scared. He trying to get his soul back. This is the big twist. Once they get you in Hollywood, they give you all this gold, all this money, but they don't tell you. Once you sign these contracts, you sell your soul and all the money they give you, you cannot use this money to get your soul back. So these rituals are real. It, these rituals been happening for years. It goes back to witchcraft. Hollywood is controlled by witchcraft. And if you are not ready to see these demons and these witches and these war don't sign these contracts. Period. Hey guys, so now we're, uh, we're all just confessing everything since it's the end now and everyone's watching me and I don't have to hide anything anymore because everything done in darkness will be brought to light. And so, uh, so as everyone was mocking me this morning and, and making fun of me because they're like, look at her fornicating with a dragon you know and and, and i just I, I just didn't say anything because i wanted to, to protect his identity and i didn't care what people said because I, I love i love him i love him and uh but before that you know because there was so much deception going on because i was like look jesus was posing you know as this fallen asian was posing as jesus and this and that i'm so confused I'm so confused. So I said, listen, I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. And I want to know who you are. And, and uh, no, I, I said, I want to know what you really look like. So show me your true self. And then he showed it to me. He showed himself to me. And he was a dragon. He was a dragon. And the God of Israel um, is actually a dragon, you know, when he's like, with the blast of the breath of my nostrils, you know, hiding under the shadow of his wings. And, and, and just all, it, Yahweh is a dragon and I have a dragon tattoo on my back. Um, so, so anyways, I just, I just didn't care because I, I know, you know, uh, me and him, me sleeping, making love to a dragon is very against the law. It, it, it would definitely kill me and my whole family, but, I just didn't care. I just didn't care. I, I just, if I die, if I perish, I perish, okay? And so I did what I did, and uh, I, I, I didn't realize that I'm just overwhelmed right now, guys. So, so I didn't, I didn't know you at the time anything. And never mind. It's just so much to say, but um. Oh yeah, because he he kept saying, you know, I, I don't want the world to see me because I don't think that they'll understand. But but I, he showed me his real self as a dragon, this beast, and he was one, you know, but I, I, I still loved him anyway, and I took a big risk. I broke the law, and I, I, I made love to him, and... Uh, I'm just overwhelmed right now, guys. I'm sorry, but, but, but that's Jesus. That's Jesus because at the last minute, I remember him uh, sending me, uh, we, we were making love and then he was kissing me and then all of a sudden, um, then he, he disappeared and I, I didn't know what happened because I, I wasn't understanding yet. I, so I, I didn't, I just didn't, I, I just didn't know what was going on or if I was going to get ready to die. Um, but but then then he was gone and um but at that time yeah i i didn't know it was i didn't know it was it was jesus i didn't know it was jesus um i just but it's jesus <laughs> it's jesus that the dragon that he's jesus and when he comes back 
uh, when he comes back, <laughs> when he comes back in his uh, true form, because I, I, I'm the one who just set him free. I'm the one who did all these things for him. I made love to him, risking my life, um, and I, I set him free from the lake of fire, and I release him back to heaven to give him his beauty for ashes, and it's just, this is hard for me right now, guys. This is very, it's so, I'm so overwhelmed, I can't talk straight right now, but um, Yahweh is Jesus, and when he comes back, yeah. You guys, you guys better be ready because he's gonna make every every one of you who went who fought against me. You you will be bowing down before me because that that, that dragon that I slept with last night that y'all were making fun of me. Uh, that that's Jesus. That's Jesus. That was Jesus because he gave me everything. He gave me the whole world. He died for me. See, but so now I raised him back to life and restored him. So now he's coming back soon and he's gonna make you all bow down to me. <laughs> Dick, for me, I want to ask, when are we going to see these people go from the Hollywood life and then we see them come back to try to be normal and they want their soul back? Like dude just said, like Ryan Garcia or she saying, because my God ain't no dragon. I don't know what she talking about. My God ain't no dragon. We know what a dragon. We we know, we know, we know. We already know. We ain't gonna go that far now. That's a whole nother topic. But we know who a dragon is. We know draconians, dracos, all that. We know what that is. But I just don't understand when will we... I mean, I, okay, we, we understand they chose to go to, down the Hollywood path. But will we ever try to help them? Will we try to be their support? Because they probably once was on our, not all of them, but there's some that was like us on a good path. Things got hard, things got tight. They got an opportunity, they took it. Some don't, some ain't familiar with the opportunity of what comes with that opportunity. Some just think it's just an opportunity and they're going to be good finally. Some people are uneducated on some of the things that we are familiar with that people like Ryan Garcia or this lady had to go through. But when they do go through that, will we be the ones that try to help them? Or are we just going to leave them out there? I'm, I'm asking. I don't think it's righteous. I don't think it's right to just leave them out there. Celebrity or not. What if they, what if they, what if, I just watched the movie Nefarious. The dude was trying to, the, the, he, was, he was basically battling back and forth with the demon. The demon would pop in, then he'd come back. Mainly the demon, demon would overtake his mind. Kind of like the movie Falling with an Azazel. My only question is, what if, cause she looked like she was going in and out of herself and maybe she's listening to a voice in her head or something. Kind of like in that movie, she stopped and paused and then it's like, then she say something, but it's kind of off. And it's like, what if that's, them controlling her mind, and then what if that's her trying to come back into controlling her mind? What if that's them as far as, what if it's a demon? It could be a demon. It could be them being able to control it through MK Ultra or a billion other different ways that we know. But I'm just asking, like, when they do try to come out and ask for help, like Orlando Brown, her, Ryan Garcia, Kanye West, if y'all notice, they all got, Wendy Williams, they all got one thing in common. They all start saying things that don't make sense, but then they say some things that make a lot of sense. It's almost like their system is falling apart. And they see that this person, like in the movie Get Out, is starting to come out of that, but they gotta hurry up and figure something out to get them back to control them. My only question is, is there anything we could do to help them when they wanna get out of that and come back to being on the bright side? Because think, they come back on being on our side, we help them. They might be able to give us information on how to figure some of these things out and how to stop it, how to beat it, how to get stronger. That's all I'm asking. This is a question. Hypothetical and it's for entertainment purposes. Months ago, I was a formidable soldier, a proud member of the elite woman army called Agoji in the illustrious African Empire of Dahomey. 
The Europeans called us the Amazon warriors and the Spartans of Africa because we were the most fierce soldiers and the only women army they had ever seen. But treachery struck our ranks and a neighboring tribe betrayed me and my comrades, capturing and selling us to the French colonizers. I was ripped from my homeland and thrown into the depths of the Caribbean Saint-Domingue, a place of torment and despair. Enslaved against my will, I endured the lash and the chains until the fire of rebellion ignited within me. I planned my escape from the plantation, luring the master of the house into a carefully laid trap. To access and listen to the Haitian Legends audiobook series of Mother General, click on the link in the bio section. The first chapter release will be on October 22nd. She Can you speak on the tension that. between Puerto Ricans and Dominicans? Of course. You know, it's, it's white supremacy. It's the worst thing that ever happened to Latinos, Hispanic, Afro-Puerto Ricans. I would say, I have to, Rosa's in my head. Sure. Rosa Clemente. Clemente. Rosa Clemente, my <laughs> sister. But the truth is, the worst thing that ever happened to us is that they gave us flags. Mm. Because they divided us in a way where now we like to flex on each other, right? Colombia right, and Venezuela, right. beef. Puerto Rico right. and the Dominican, beef. Colombia and Panama, beef. Right. Like every and it's it's white supremacy at work. Mm -hmm. It's like you're walking around with a colonizer's flag, speaking the colonizer's language, shaming other people because they don't speak Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not my native tongue. My native tongue is Arawak or Taino, right? They didn't teach us our they took our language for us. But we do that to one another, and you know, it, it's it's been so. Puerto Ricans and Dominicans are the same people. And they're gonna and people are gonna come. Don't I don't have Twitter, so don't waste your time. <laughs> there is the same people. Cuba, Puerto Rico, Cuba and Puerto Rico were called the same bird with two uh, the same bird with two, two wings. wings, right? Mm -hmm. And so you look at these people and they're told it's all white supremacy. It's like, oh, you got good hair. Dominicans are darker. They're closer to Haiti. They got Haitian blood. Haitian people are Afro Latinos. Technically, they're from Española. They belong to us as well. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff yeah, is foolishness. Because if you go to Puerto Rico and you go to the Dominican Republic, you see struggle. And mm -hmm. every single day they tell us, but you're not like that. Well, you a citizen. Right. Are you really a citizen? Because when the hurricane yeah, came, the only papers they threw at you were a bounty. Mm -hmm. Word up. You know what I'm saying? So I just sit here and I think about all of the things that divide us. And when it comes to being Puerto Rican and Dominican and being told, that I didn't, they, I didn't have to tell people I was Dominican because I had good hair, or like you're not like that. You you more us than you are them. That messes with your self esteem because mm -hmm. that's what I am, and there's nothing I can do about it. So you telling me technically that part of me is there's something wrong with part of me because I don't present. You know, I, I, I present darker over there, right. and, and right. the that's what they've done with Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. Uh, people who, you know, off fry plantains, eat peas and rice that come from where we really come from. Right. People who don't, Spanish is not our native tongue, you know, in all honesty. And they took our village away from us. I speak of, about the village all the time because I know that that is so anti-American. Yes, America yes, really pushes yes. individualism because it dilutes groups of people that would That's normally right. have power, right? It takes a village to raise a child. Right. That's a smart woman. That's a smart woman. Spam it up in the comments if as you trying to listen to her, he's talking and it's getting on my damn nerves, bro. It was getting on my nerves. Pissing me off, bro. Stop talking. Wait until she finish, and then you say whatever it is you got to say. If you agree with it, then say it after. Let us hear her first, bro. Stop. Pissing me off. I hate when they do that, bro. I mean, yeah, but but she was speaking hella facts. And I was told by somebody in my family to drop that in there because, yeah, I, I have a part of the family that I don't really deal with, and they are, they, they, they're Puerto Rican. I don't really have that connection with them, so. But I did, they, they did reach out and was like, hey man, you need to drop that in here. So I was like, all right, let me drop that in here. Even though we don't have really relations, if you're telling me to do it, and I know you know what you're talking about, I'm gonna drop it in there, and I'm gonna see what the collective got to say. So to the collective, that that's any of those ethnicities, how you feel? You agree with her? 
Is there is there something that could be fixed and worked out there? I'm asking. I was told by somebody to put it out there, so I'm 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 and I'm unfamiliar with that. So enlighten me. Lace me up with some game. We made it to the end of this. And I appreciate y'all if y'all stuck all the way through. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notify whenever we drop them uploads. Y'all know we got them four videos a week coming, man. Stop playing with me. I be coming every every week with this, bro. And I love doing it for y'all. It's been, like I said, it's been a, one of the best times of my life. And I appreciate y'all. And I love the collective. Again, I want to tell y'all, when y'all be DMing me on Instagram, I apologize. Some of y'all messages have went all the way to the end of request. And, um, spam likely and all that stuff so I gotta go through all those messages I'm slacking some of y'all I've seen some of y'all send me stuff as far as logos and I didn't even know that y'all sent it I apologize I apologize I apologize but again I'm getting through to those and I still respond even though it's late I'll let y'all know I apologize for responding to that late same with the comments there's times where I'm seeing comments where I'm like damn I'm late I just be trying to get all these videos so many hours in a day and I'll do all this by myself. I don't have a team doing it with me. So, but I apologize again. Shout out to the collective. And until I see y'all in the next one, man, y'all know what it is. We gone. Hey, yeah, mm, I just check my count. Check, sheesh, at the amount.